So uh, thanks everybody for coming. So our speaker today is Mark, and Mark's a final year BSc public student, and uh, Mark spent his internship last year at the WHO when he was doing some really interesting work um, looking at the burden of disease study. So Mark's just going to tell us a little bit about the work he was doing um, today. So I'll let you take it away, Mark. Okay, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> um, the work I was doing was leading up to the formation of this new network in Europe called the European Burden of Disease Network. And basically they wanted me to try and find all the burden of disease studies that were conducted in Europe and sort of summarise where they had been done and when they had been done. And I suppose a bit, just because it's not in the presentation, but about the network itself, it, um, it aims to sort of bring together researchers of burden of disease and to encourage like daily studies across Europe and for using them in policy as well. And one of the main aims is to harmonize or standardize the like methods that they use throughout Europe because different researchers are conducting the studies in slightly different ways with different um, disability weights and things like that. They're using so it's to sort of welcome to standardize this um, throughout the region and to sort of encourage research in the area. Um, so the objectives of what I did, uh, first of all, it was to identify the current uh, and past levels of burden of disease knowledge in the region and where they have been conducted. Um, it also helped to identify experts such as for the first meeting on the it was the 20th and 21st of September, it helped us to identify researchers to um, invite them to that meeting. It um, helped to identify and classify studies, and because the network was very interested in analysing the methodology of studies and sort of making a standardised method where possible, it. I suppose it helped to have a kind of a pool of all the studies all together to look at. Um, and it also helped to assess the need for burden of disease in different European countries. We could see where it had been done and where it hadn't been done. Um, here's my inclusion and exclusion criteria for when I was doing the search. Um, first of all, the principal investigator of the study needed to be from within the European region since we were interested in Europe. Um, the study population as well I sort of restricted to Europe because it was very hard to find studies outside of Europe when we were looking mainly at European countries. Um, also that they used the DALI metric, the Disability Adjusted Life Years, as their way of looking at burden of disease and um, that they calculated these dailies. It wasn't like a review study or a study just discussing methods that they actually calculated this. And then the exclusion are kind of, well, the opposites really. Um, yeah. So I conducted three different searches using these um, search engines in this order. And the reason I used uh, Google and Google Scholar is because um, WHO had found before that the burden of disease studies weren't in any particular database. They were kind of very spread out. And there were certain um, sort of health ministries that had done their own reports, so like, like country reports, which wouldn't be in an academic journal. So this was the reason behind using Google. Um, and so the first search I used the search terms of the name of the member state, uh, national burden of disease and DALI and then I conducted this for each of the 53 member states in the European region and I also set it to only show studies since the year 2000 otherwise it seemed to locate a lot of early sort of global burden of disease studies since we weren't we were interested in studies sort of done in countries outside of the Global Burden of Disease project. And I've got a minimum number of search, search hits of 72 and a maximum of about 500. And from this, I found a total of 50 relevant studies. 
typed in for the second search, I used the search terms burden of disease and the names of the member states again for each of the 53. And I used Google. I left on the function to sort of knock out similar results because um, they usually were just the same result <laughs> repeated. And I got that many search hits and 41 relevant studies. Then for the third search, I used the terms DALI and the names of researchers that I'd found in the previous two searches. Um, I'd actually found like more than 600 researchers in total, so this took quite a long while, and there were search hits between 0 and 104. And then from this part of it, I found 73 studies, and then I sort of reviewed the ones I'd found and got even more researchers that were involved. And I did the same thing again, but this time I just used their surname because I found it the first time around when I was using their first name and maybe middle name and surname. It, it, um, it was very specific and sometimes where just one initial was used or something, it didn't seem to actually come up. So it just kept it more general, but then also widened the number of studies I found up to nearly 7,000 in one case. So I just looked at the first 100 in each case. And I found five more here, which made a total of 78 in this third search. So how did I go from the search hits to the relevant studies? Um, first of all, I got a number of studies from reading the titles and the abstracts sort of in relation to the inclusion criteria. And then as well, I read the sort of background sections of the studies that I had found and any studies mentioned here were also included. Um, so to summarize that, in the first search it was 50, about 30%. The second one was about 25% and the last one was just under half. Getting the, I got the most from that while I was looking at the researchers' names. And, but there were a number, I suppose, of sort of limitations. Firstly, on the sort of scope of what was found, I had restricted it to DALI studies. And there are other methods of analysing burden of disease, but I didn't include these. Um, as well, unpublished literature, I couldn't find and in with new studies there's kind of delays in publication so for this year there'd be probably a big underrepresentation. Um, and as well all my search terms were in English and while Google I suppose compensates this a bit it probably still led to some bias towards countries that um, publish more material in English and it totaled 169. Um, just to break down the kind of types of studies that were found, um, 90 were on a specific topic such as burden of um, pneumonia or of a particular condition. Um, 33 then were kind of um, larger but still a specific topic. I called them um, multiple diseases or conditions, so I class that as greater than or equal to five different conditions or diseases and they would include examples such as sort of chemical exposures where they looked at say 10 different chemicals and there were 33 of these, 24 of them were um, multi-country which the research, they involved researchers from different countries working together and they often involved analyzing burden of disease from different populations in different countries and comparing it and they were all very specific generally and then 22 were full burden of disease so like the global burden of disease project they looked at I suppose over a hundred diseases and conditions so these were the really big ones and then these can be subdivided um, on the other side two of them were national um, so for the whole country and they also looked at different regions of the country so they might have looked at um, 
say urban areas and rural areas as well within that country. Then there were 11 that were just the whole sort of country, national, just an average of the whole country. And then there were nine that were subnational, so just particular areas of a member state. And because of the way WHO, I suppose, um, its member states, a country for like England or Scotland would be a subnational because it would be the member state of the United Kingdom. Um, then the years of the studies, the earliest one I found was in 1997. And there seems to be a sort of gen, a kind of a positive trend going up towards the f latest full year of 2015, going from one to up to around 20 in the recent years. And in this year, there was only eight, but a lot of them were probably not published yet. Um, so yeah. And then for the geographic distribution of studies, the um, the <laughs> vast majority were in the Netherlands, but they did tend to be very specific. They sort of did one for each kind of disease on its own. Um, then Spain was next, was 18. Belgium and the United Kingdom was 13. Denmark and Portugal was 10. France, Germany and Sweden was 5. And then the rest did less than 5. And I suppose an important message from this is that 21 countries have done burden of disease studies out of 53 member states I looked at, which was actually a lot better than what WHO thought it would be, <laughs> so it's pretty good. Um, then to sort of look at the years that they were published and the types of studies together, to sort of bring all this together into one piece. Um, I've got a map of the region and then the colours for the types of studies. And then on the right hand side I've got the year that they did their first study, the name of the member state, and then in brackets the um, total number of studies for the, for the year of the slide. So the United Kingdom had done one study by the end of 1997 and it was a full study I think for south and west of England, I think it was. Um, then in 1998, there was a full study for Sweden. Um, oh, it's... <laughs> 19... I meant to put that off. <laughs> then 2000, there was Switzerland. 2001, Poland did their first one. 2002, um, Belgium. 2003, Serbia did a full study. Uh, 2004, a lot of different countries did their first ones. Um, 2005, there was France and Italy. Um, 2006, there was no new countries, but more were conducted. Um, 2007, and the same. And we can see that in the Netherlands it's very steadily going up. I think they did more every year. Um, 2008, Germany did their first one. Um, 2012. The first one in Denmark was as recent as 2012. Then Austria in 2014, and some very recent ones of Albania, Bulgaria, and Lithuania just last year. They did their first one that I found. And then, as far as I went, um, there were 21 member states that had done them, and it totaled 169 studies. So now I'll just look more specifically at the full studies, since these are the biggest and most extensive studies, and the ones that the WHO were most interested in <laughs> when I did this. <laughs> um, the two national ones that did subnational divisions as well were in Estonia and Turkey. The um, 
full national ones without any subdivisions were in Spain, France, Sweden, Estonia, Romania and Serbia. And the most were done in Spain. They did five different ones. And I don't know if it's clear there, but the study in 2013 and the first one in 2011 for Spain are kind of highlighted because they were sort of unique in that they were particular age groups within the population. The 2013 one looked specifically at adolescents and young people, and the 2011 looked at the elderly population. And all the other studies here looked at the population as a whole. Um, then the subnational ones in the United Kingdom. In 2015, there was one for the whole of England. It was actually a huge study by Public Health England. In 2008, they had one for London. In 1997, the earliest study I found, they did a full one for the south and west of England, those two areas. In Spain, in 2014, they did one for Catalonia, I think, and one in 2012 for Valencia. Portugal, there was one for the northern half of the country in 2011. Uh, France did one for Paris in 2005. They also did a full national one, if you look above, in 2007. Um, Belgium did a one in 2002 for Flores, I think, and Switzerland for the canton or the state of Geneva in 2000. So, again, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, put all the information so far all together onto one slide. We have the like member state names going across the top and the types of studies going down the side. Uh, the top three rows are um, the full studies, the national with subdivisions, the national and the subnational. Then there's the multiple diseases and conditions, the specific studies and the ones that involved multiple uh, researchers from multiple countries and they've been placed under the country of the principal investigator in this table and in the total at the bottom and it's just a breakdown of it all. <coughs> so to summarize the findings there was the total of nearly 170 and probably more and the usual focus was on specific diseases or specific sort of topics or areas and there was less kind of full studies like the global burden of disease study they were less using that criteria there was only 22 and um, most of the full burden of disease studies are actually new finds for the department I was working in in WHO and a lot of the people that have been working in burden of disease for so long they just there wasn't awareness of what the other countries had done. So a lot of them weren't widely known, such as the ones in Spain, uh, in France, and in Serbia. Um, the burden of disease research in Spain as well was also particularly rich. There was a total of 18 studies, and seven out of these seven were full studies, and that was the most out of any of the member states of full studies. Um, and as well, <coughs> when we looked at the maps, we can see that um, there were no studies from Russian-speaking countries and more than 70% of those 21 member states are also EU members, so there's sort of a more sort of West Europe kind of distribution. Um, the implications then of these findings for the, at the first meeting of the network when I presented this um, they benefited the discussion around methodology because they showed the studies that have been done and they could be analysed in more detail. Um, it helped the discussion around new studies, so where they needed to be done, where they were absent, where not many have been done and where a lot had already been done. They also um, helped the exchange of expertise, it helped bring researchers together and it helped identify people to invite to the first meeting as well. 
um, most of which I'd never met before, so it's pretty interesting. Um, it um, enhanced the visibility of these studies as well, bringing them all together. And WHO have sort of kept them in a spreadsheet, and they're going to continue um, updating this from now on. So they'll have this sort of database of burden of disease studies now for DALI based burden of disease studies. Hi. Um, and then just some that didn't get included, that are ongoing or haven't been completed yet. The only one I know of is in Scotland. They're doing a full burden of disease study led by um, Diane Stockholm, I think, and Ian Grant. And if anyone knows of any others in Ireland or anything, WHO would really like to know. Um, and I'm actually finished, so thank you. <laughs> and if anyone's interested in learning more or getting more information or contributing to the network in any way, um, Dr. Christian Gap at WHO is the contact person for this network. Okay. Do you have any questions? <laughs>